So far, really happy with the performance this mini gaming PC's put now, and given the fact that it's only coming in at 5 liters and we can play these games at 1440p, it's really, really impressive. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a very small form factor gaming PC. In fact, this is going to be coming in at 5 liters, and it's going to have the power to play your favorite AAA games. Now just taking a look at everything we have here on the desk, it does seem like a few things are missing, but this is actually everything we need to put this together. Some of you might notice that I don't have a box CPU on the desk, and that's because it's actually built into the motherboard we're going to be using for this build. This is actually one of my favorite new products from Minus Forum. It's the BD770i. And basically what this is, is a mini ITX board with a powerful 8-core 16-thread Zen 4 CPU pre-installed along with the CPU cooler. It's actually a really nice little setup. And to get this together, it's pretty easy. I will go over all of the parts as we're building it. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically, that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So recently on the channel, I did a build video using the BD770i. It's a great performer, but with that one, we went with the 33 liter case. Had a lot of people asking about going really small form factor. So today, we're going to be slapping this inside of a 5 liter case. As you can see, it's already got a CPU cooler pre-installed. It supports SODIMM RAM, we can go up to 64 gigs, and it's got a PCIe 5.0 PCIe X16 slot, so we can add a desktop GPU to this pretty easily. And when it comes to the CPU they opted to use, it's actually got the Ryzen 7 7745HX, 8 cores, 16 threads, it is based on Zen 4. It's got a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a boost up to 5.1, and it'll actually run it up to 100 watts in this motherboard the way it is. It's actually a mobile Zen 4 CPU, kind of meant for a laptop, but they've managed to build an ITX board around this. As you saw, we just installed our RAM. It supports SODIMM at 5200 MHz. We can go up to 64 gigs, but I opted to use two 16 gig sticks from Crucial, bringing it up to 32 gigabytes in dual channel. Now we're going to go ahead and install our SSD, and this will support PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSDs. It's got a pretty nice cooler for these SSDs, and I'm just going with the one terabyte Lexar drive. And one thing we will need to add to this is a fan for the CPU cooler. Comes with a bracket that supports a 120 millimeter fan, and uh, I do have something that we're going to throw on here, but I want to get it inside of the case and everything before I install it. Actually goes together quite nicely, and there's really not a lot of work we need to do here with the motherboard, given that the cooler and the CPU are already in the board. To get this down to that 5 liter form factor, I chose one of my favorite cases right now that supports a dual slot low profile GPU. This is the LZ Mod A24, it's version 5 here. You can pick them up on AliExpress for around 80 bucks, I've seen them for a little cheaper here and there. I think they also offer a gray or a silver version, but I opted for the black version. And this is one of my favorite cases right now, just given the form factor and what we can fit in here, especially given that we now have the low profile RTX 4060s on the market. As you can see, there's not a lot of room in this mini ITX case, but it does support that dual slot low profile GPU. And in order to get everything in here without using a Pico power supply, you will need to use a Flex PSU, and we'll get to that in a second. The way it sits in here is pretty neat. Let's go ahead and install this mini ITX board. So it's going to sit right in here nice and neat. Now uh, with the way that the power supply cable is going to go, I do need to kind of offset my fan a bit. Not ideal, but I still think we're going to get plenty of air over that CPU cooler. And I opted to use a 120 millimeter Noctua. It's a low profile coming in at 15 millimeters thick. 
There's a ton of flex power supplies on the market right now. This is one that I picked up from Amazon. It actually wasn't that expensive. They claim it's a 600 watt power supply, but I wouldn't run this on a 600 watt system. I'd say we're closer to 350, kind of false advertising there, but it does work and we've got a fully modular flex power supply. So we can actually clean this build up really nice once we get everything else in. So I've got my fan installed, power supply wired up. Now it's time to install the GPU. And for this, we're going with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060. This is the gigabyte low profile dual slot edition. It does require one eight pin power connector. So keep that in mind. Really wish it would run off of, you know, just what we can put out of that PCIe slot. But unfortunately with this card, at least this generation does need a little more. If we're not talking about the super high end, low profile NVIDIA cards that cost thousands of dollars, this is the best low profile gaming card on the market right now. Even though it's a dual slot, we can still get away building really small with it. As you can see, we've got this five liter case. And once it's finished up, it looks a little something like this. And I think the whole setup went together really nicely. Uh, having that modular power supply does allow you to kind of route those cables a little differently, kind of cleans it up, a little more airflow throughout. And now all that's really left to do for me is install Windows on that one terabyte drive, get everything updated, and then we can take a look at some gaming on this thing. Okay, so now that we've got everything installed, I'll give you a quick rundown on everything here. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 7745HX, 8 cores, 16 threads. It will run it up to 100 watts in this system. And we've got that boost up to 5.1 gigahertz, which is more than enough, especially given that the cores are based on Zen 4. 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 5200 megahertz. And of course, we've got that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 with 8 gigs of VRAM. Now, I disabled the internal iGPU. This chip does have the uh, Radeon 610 with two CUs, which, you know, doesn't do much for gaming. Video playback is great, but I didn't want it to interfere at all, so I just totally disabled it. Moving right into some PC gaming, here's Cyberpunk 2077. We're at high settings, 1440p, DLSS set to balanced. Now, I do think that this card can handle a lot of stuff at 1440p. Really, they kind of advertised this as a 1080 Ultra card, but if you don't mind taking a few of the settings down or maybe even introducing some uh, resolution scale using FSR or even DLSS, which we're using here, then you can have a really good time at 1440p. By the end of this, we had an average of 85 FPS. I personally think it's looking really good here, and the next thing I wanted to show off were some benchmarks that I ran on this thing. And the first one we have here is 3D Mark Night Raid, coming in with a total score of 52,339. I also tested out Fire Strike, 23,890. Time Spy, 10,194. And since we've got an RTX card that supports ray tracing, I also wanted to run Port Royal, 5,720. Now, it's a 4060, so you're not going to be doing ultra ray tracing on, like, Cyberpunk. But you can still get some out of the way. Games like Minecraft do run pretty decently with it turned on. Here's Forza Motorsports, and this didn't fare as well as I thought it would. I've actually been kind of ranting and raving about the newer driver updates and uh, optimizations for the game getting much better performance on a lot of stuff that I've been testing. But on this setup here, as you can see, we did dip under 60. And even going down to 1080 doesn't fare much better at all. So close to dipping. So yeah, I mean, they still definitely need some optimizations here. And I know it's really easy to blame it on drivers and optimizations. You know how buggy it can really be. Sometimes you boot it up, runs pretty good. Sometimes it just runs like we're seeing here. Next on the list, Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1440p, very high settings. I don't need any kind of DLSS or screen scaling with this game. It just works really well on the 4060. And by the end, we had an average of 83 FPS. Horizon 5, 1440p, Ultra, not a problem for the 4060. We could probably go up to extreme because by the end of this, we had an average of 131 FPS. And by the way, the 4060 will run this game over 60 FPS, 4K, high settings, and with a little bit of DLSS, you can even jack it up to Ultra. And finally, we've got Starfield. So yeah, I mean, uh, it's looking pretty good out here, but I am at 1440p, medium settings, with DLSS set to balanced. 
During planet exploration and indoor, even when a lot of battling is going on, this does an amazing job. Indoors, we can actually get an average of around 116 FPS, but as soon as we move over to a city like Jemison, it really falls on its face. Using the same exact settings, we're just in a city landscape. You can see we're not faring very well here. I th so overall, I think the new Minisform BD770i is perfect for these mini ITX builds. Now this is coming in at $399. You get the motherboard, you get the CPU, and the cooler all in one. You could always buy a mini ITX board and a CPU separately and a cooler. Sometimes it's going to come out a little more expensive than this. You could go more powerful with it if you wanted to, but I think this has more than enough power, especially pairing it up with an RTX 4060 here. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links to everything I used in the description below. And if you want to see anything else running on this little rig, just let me know. I'll try to get another video made. Since we're using an NVIDIA card, a little hard to run something like SteamOS, but we could always install another Linux variant and get some really awesome Linux gaming out of the way on something like this also. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.